Good morning. Uh, Javier Bassett, Attorney General for the great state of California. Let me begin by introducing the people who are standing here with me today uh, because they are the reason we are here and uh, they're the ones that make possible announcements like today's. Uh, Tanya Ibanez, who is to my right, she's our senior. <laughs> One more time. Tanya Ibanez, she is our senior assistant attorney general who deals with issues in our charitable trust section. Elizabeth Kim, who is to my left, is a supervising deputy attorney general in the charitable trust division as well, uh, section, excuse me, and also Brian Armstrong, who is a deputy attorney general in the same section. I thank them for being with me, and I thank them for the work that they are doing. Uh, July is Military Consumer Protection Month, but here at the Department of Justice, that's a year-round activity for us, and it's a year-round commitment. We want our veterans and our active service members to know that at the California Department of Justice, we've got their back. We go after unscrupulous businesses that target them. We work to make, eliminate sham charities that claim to help them. On the business side, I can just name a few because today we're going to talk about charities, but just to name a few, we've taken action against businesses that try to sell automobiles to uh, active member service members. Uh, Coast Cred Coastal Credit is an auto lender that we went after not long ago. Last year, we got an action against them for the way they were trying to uh, predatorily lend to young men and women in our military service. And we were able to prove that they were doing wrong to our men and women in uniform. Uh, Ramil and Melinda Abacon, uh, excuse me, Abacod, San Diego Jewelers, who were out there essentially taking advantage of young service members again, uh, selling them product uh, and providing them with financing that was way beyond what was reasonable. We are now in court against them as we speak. Ashford University, a predatory for-profit college that targeted young men and women in our service, uh, first-time college goers, uh, people from disadvantaged and minority communities, because Ashford University ex suspected that with very little uh, past history attending college that they could be taken advantage of as well. We're going after Ashford University to protect our men and women who have served in uniform. But here today, we're going to be talking about charities, and specifically sham charities that hurt donors by taking their money under false pretenses, but certainly they hurt our military community by diverting money away from legitimate charities that truly want to serve our veterans. Today, together with the attorneys general from every state and regulators from every state in the nation, along with the Federal Trade Commission, I'm here to announce a new program, Operation Donate with Honor. It's a new campaign that pairs enforcement and education relating to charities. The California Department of Justice has been very busy on both of these fronts. Since I took office, we have taken 10 enforcement actions against charities that claim to assist veterans. Uh, and you will see those operations listed to the left. Uh, actually, no, those are, those, are, those are them? Okay, those are the 10. Uh, let me name just a few of them, though. The highlights of the lowlights, uh, or I should say the low lowlifes. Uh, Help the Vets, Inc. It will be shut down. You can see from one of the solicitation materials that it, right here behind me. This is some of the material that they would put out. Along with the Federal Trade Commission and five other state AGs, we filed suit against this charity and its founder. Uh, and I may ask uh, Tanya Ibanez to give us a little bit more detail about, detail about Help the Vets in, in a while, if you, if you so choose to get a sense of what some of these charities are doing to our veteran community. Uh, Help the Vets use five different aliases to confuse donors. They raised $20 million from 2014 to 2017, yet little of that money ever actually helped veterans. More than $2 million is now being recovered from Help the Vets and its founders to assist veterans as a result of our action. 
we issued a cease and desist order for the Americans, American Veterans Foundation, and we've assessed them thousands of dollars in penalties for repeated false statements. Most of the funds they claimed would support veterans instead went to pay for for-profit telemarketers. And last year, we filed a lawsuit against Wounded Warriors Support Group and its directors. Again, very appealing sounding names. You, you think you hear a group like that and you must think, oh, they're right there. They're, they're there to help our men and women who served. Let's do what we can to help. And so people give. In our lawsuit, we allege that the operators ran raffles to raise funds purportedly to support veterans, but instead they diverted the funds for their personal expenses. That lawsuit is still pending. We will continue to file both legal and administrative enforcement actions against bad actors who prey on our generous Californians. My office also operates the Registry of Charitable Trusts. Any charity operating or soliciting in our state must register with us and file annual reports. Unfortunately, many charities register, but then they fail to follow up and file annual reports with the Department of Justice. The status of these organizations is listed as delinquent on the registry's website. 514 veteran-related charities fall into that category, delinquent category, right now. They will be receiving delinquency notices from my office that give them an opportunity to cure their reporting violations. But if they fail to do so, our registry will suspend, at least we will send suspension notices to those charities and take action if they don't respond. The 514 delinquent uh, charities, I should note, represents more than half of the charities registered in California that uh, purport to do charitable work on behalf of veterans. We will also use the work of the Franchise Tax Board to help us to rescind their tax-exempt status in California of these charities. In addition to enforcing the laws, we actively educate the people of California to recognize fraud. Donors can protect themselves and their gifts. We have donation tips for supporting veterans on our website, which you'll see on the chart behind me, and which I'll discuss in a moment, at least a few of them. Review the charity's filing with our registry at AOG, I'm sorry, oag.ca.gov slash charities. So the first tip we can give to anyone, review the charity's filings with our registry at oag.ca.gov slash charities. Easiest thing you can do. You want to check up on a, a particular charity, find out if it's worth giving to them to help a veteran, go to our website. Check on the charity's filings. You may not want to donate to a charity that is listed as delinquent in its reporting requirements or worse, is listed as suspended. Another tip, give to organizations you trust. Get the charity's name, the website, and physical location. Just because the charity claims it supports veterans does not mean it supports any veteran in the state of California. Another tip, don't be pressured by telemarketers. If you receive a call from a telemarketer, do something very simple. Ask them if they're registered with my office, the California Department of Justice, and ask them what percentage of your donation will be paid to the telemarketer instead of going to help veterans. You will be surprised in many cases of the answer. Our office publishes a fundraising report each year that reports which charities are getting less than 10% of proceeds from donations obtained through these solicitation campaigns. Why would you want to give to a charity that actually receives only 10 cents out of every dollar you send it? Another tip, ask a charity how much of any donation will go to support the charitable program itself. 
Charities are legally required to give you this information. Another simple one, watch out for similar sounding names. Help the Vets, Inc. As you can see behind me, was using five aliases. American Disabled Veterans Foundation, Military Families of America, Veterans Emergency uh, Blood Bank, Vets Fighting Breast Cancer, Veterans Fighting Breast Cancer. You gotta ask yourself, why, if you're helping veterans, do you need to have so many different names for what you do? If you see any deceptive or abusive charitable solicitations, do me a favor, let us know. We have a complaint form online at same website I gave before, oag.ca.gov slash charities. And finally, if you've taken appropriate precautions, maybe the most important tip that we can give you. Please continue giving. Part of what makes California so strong is the generosity of our people. But let's make sure our generosity actually goes to the people we're trying to help. There are legitimate charities out there that help our family members and our neighbors who give or, are, or have given service to our nation. My office aims to give you the tools to find them. With that, we are prepared to take any questions you might have, but what we hope you will do is help us disseminate the information that will make it possible for Californians to continue to be generous, to give to true charities that want to help our service members and our veterans and go after those who are abusing of the privilege to have the charitable name behind them. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your being here.